Man, people say some weird stuff about being single, like really dumb stuff. Christians too. And I think it's just like not only dumb, but it's unbiblical as well. So today I'm going to share with you three dumb things people say about being single and whether you're single or not. I think this video is going to help you understand singleness and marriage a lot more. I've heard this first one all the time and I've had people say it straight to my face that when you're ready, that when you are ready, God will bring you somebody. When you are mature enough, then he will bring you somebody to marry. So in your single years, you know, that's just preparation for marriage. But if you truly look at that saying and, and dig underneath the surface of what they're trying to say there, they're basically saying that, hey, you're not a good enough Christian yet. You're not holy enough to get a spouse. So that's why you don't have one yet. That's why God hasn't brought you one into your life. And meanwhile, this is said to said to me by somebody that's been, you know, dating for a couple of weeks. It's kind of laughable. But at the same time, hey, okay, is this true? Are people that are married, are they more holy than single people? Is that what God's plan is all about? He says, hey, you know what? You've been so good in your single years. As a little bit, a little bit of a present for you, I'm going to bring somebody else into your life that you can be with. No, that's not how it works at all. And this hierarchy of believing that married people are somehow more holy or they are mature enough to handle a relationship is just not the reality. There are plenty of really, really mature people that are single. And there's pretty, pr there's plenty of immature people that are married. So what is the truth here? Well, God often uses and he does use marriage as a sanctification process process. Like he uses that sanctification in this person's life. So it might not even be that you're super mature, but it actually might be that you're immature. And yet God wants you to hyperspeed that sanctification through marriage. So he brings somebody into your life, even though maybe you're not ready for it, but it's going to amplify your growth. The lie that's tethered to this one as well is that when you have enough faith, not only when you are holy enough or you're mature enough, but when you have enough faith, then God will bring you someone. And this was actually uttered by somebody in my comment section a while back. And uh, you can see the comment here. I'm not trying to shame this person, but just to say that, hey, this is a common belief that people have. When you have enough faith, then God will bring you the person you're supposed to be with. But this totally takes out the fact that God uses the means of our action to fulfill his purposes. Think about it. We don't treat other things that way. We don't expect God to just put food on our dining room table. No, we go to work so we can earn money so then we can, you know, buy food and make food and put it on our table. And so he uses that means. So God did provide for us. He did provide for us, but we still, he still used the means of our action to bring about his purposes and his blessings in that case. And so, hey, you know, he's going to be the one to bring you your person. Absolutely. But he still uses the means of your action, especially as a man who's supposed to be the pursuer. If you're not doing anything, if you're not growing, if you're not putting yourself out there, then, hey, look, you, you shouldn't be the one to say, oh, God, why don't I have somebody in my life? Well, you're not doing anything about it. And I'm not saying take things out of, into your own hands, meaning that you do something that's unwise or reckless or, you know, something like that. Obviously, that's not what God wants you to do. But that doesn't mean that we can't be acting in good, beneficial ways in pursuit of something that we desire that's good. And don't get it twisted. You're not the mastermind behind this. It's not like your plan of, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to meet this person. Hey, you don't know any of that, but it's about putting yourself out there. It's about doing the things that make sense and are wise to meet different people, to have those conversations, to be authentic in your communication and to be deliberate in your intentions with different people to say, hey, look, I'm interested in you. I want to pursue you. And God's going to facilitate that. If it's meant to be, then it's going to come to fruition. The second dumb thing that people say about being single is that single people can be more devout in their faith and they are more devout in their faith than married people because they're undistracted. And this is jumping off something that Paul said that says, hey, it's better to be single. If you're not burning with passion, right? If you don't have that desire, then it's good to be, it's better to be single because then you can just go all in for Christ. But what does this lead us to? Like, that is completely true. And I affirm Paul's words. Obviously, they're the words of God. But when we hyperemphasize that being single is king, right? What happens then is that those people that do have those passions, that, do, that should be getting married, really, 
they feel like, okay, um, if I get married, then, then I can't serve God the best in the best way, right? I'm not really glorifying God. I'm, I'm paying too much attention to my wife. I'm paying too much attention to my husband and I'm not really glorifying God in the way that he wants me to. So maybe I can push myself to just be single and then I can really glorify God. The truth is it there, there's a uniqueness in the different ways that we can bring God glory. There's this hyper emphasis on mission work and, and being single and just going to Africa and, and being this missionary. And like, obviously that is a wonderful or being a missionary on the streets or evangelists or, or whatever that looks like for you. But I think there's a, there's not as much of an emphasis on the beauty of living a simple life with your family, of caring for your wife, of caring for your children, of providing for them, of protecting them. That brings God glory. That brings God glory. We don't like to talk about that because it's not glamorous. It's not cool. It's not leaving everything you know to live in a foreign land and, and be persecuted. And like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. In fact, that's a, that's a wonderful, glorious thing if that is your path. But it's also a wonderful, glorious thing if you have a normal job, quote unquote, if you have a family, if you have a wife, if you care for them, if you protect them, if you provide for them, if you lead them spiritually, that is a glorious thing. And so don't get it twisted. Don't think that your path to glorifying God is through singleness. No, it, it, for the vast majority of us, it's not. It's through marriage. It's through imaging Christ. It should be imaging Christ and the church. Single people shouldn't feel like marriage is the end all be all, but at the same time, they also shouldn't feel like it's a detriment or it, it hinders their ability to serve Christ because the truth is they are serving Christ in their marriage. Maybe the work looks different. The mission field looks different, but they're still glorifying Christ in that. And if you burn with those passions, if you burn with those desires, then it is a good thing to find a wife. The last dumb thing that people say about being single is truly that you cannot be complete unless you are married. And this isn't a deliberate statement. Nobody's going to say this to your face, but it's often propagated or it's under the surface really. It's saying that, hey, as a single person, like, you know, we don't really have anything to say to you until you get married. And then we have all this advice and all these seminars and all these conferences. But as a single person, like, hey, um, I guess be pure and like we don't really have much to say to you. There's not much purpose in that. But the truth is there's so much purpose in that. That is such a good place, a wonderful place to grow in your faith. And you are not incomplete. Like your partner is not the one who completes you. We use that language in marriage sometimes. We say, yeah, you're my missing piece. But truly for the single person, for all of us, who makes us complete? That's Christ. That's Christ. We are whole in him because he is the one that we will have for all of eternity. Uh, like, I, I don't care if you're married or if you're not. If you are in Christ, then you are whole and you are complete. What that means then is if you are feeling inadequate now, if you are feeling like there are missing pieces, or if you're feeling like by getting married, you will fill in those gaps of your life. That's a dangerous road because if you're looking for another person to fulfill your needs instead of Christ, then you're putting on them an expectation of a savior, of somebody that comes in to save you. And that's just an unrealistic expectation for somebody in a relationship. Ultimately, what you want to be doing is giving of yourself to them, of sacrificing yourself, of having your cup so much overflow by Christ just pouring into you that you have ample to give to them. Not that your cup is empty and you're looking to get from another person to fill you up. Do you, you know what I mean? That makes sense to you? Because we need to be filled by Christ first and foremost. That's where our love, that's where our acceptance, that's where our security, that's where our sense of wholeness needs to come from first. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it and got something from it, I encourage you to give it a like down below and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. This content is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. If you want to support my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, hit the link in my description and sign up today. It would be a huge blessing. I'll see you next time. God bless.